welcome back to the OPEX podcast where fitness is explained. I am your host as always, Robbie Burke. And on today's show, I wanted to get James on to share his thoughts on the sad news about the recent passing of coach Charles Poliquin. On this episode, James discusses the impact that Charles had on him personally, and also the impact that Charles had on the entire coaching profession. This was a really great conversation with James, guys. Stay with us. All right, James, thanks so much for making time on such short notice. A um, bit of a sad note, um, just with the passing of Charles. So just kind of wanted to let you um, maybe put out your message to the, the public and how you feel about the, the, sad, the sad news of Charles passing. Yeah, well, thanks for um, uh, meeting with me too. I know that you're in a, <laughs> a really exciting uh, time for yourself with a visit over to the US Bay. So um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, man, I was really surprised. Um, I was actually filming uh, Mixed Modal. Um, and, you know, it was fair, it was quite eerie because we were doing um, a shoot on uh, force velocity relationship and how it carries over into Mixed Modal versus, you know, and the difference between force velocity relationship um, and how it applies to just strength and conditioning relative to mixed model. Um, And here I, you know, my, my texts just start, you know, floating up um, based upon everyone getting the information that Charles had passed Um, and quickly recognize, which is the first thing I, first thing that came to my mind actually was how many embedded, you know, whether it was consciously or not, how many times he embedded things in strength coaches' heads on principles of program design that will last for decades and decades, you know, like, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't spend the rest of the afternoon without thinking about how each of my words and where they come from in design, um, for little things like, you know, three to four times five and why certain amount of rest, Charles was always part of almost all of those conversations in some way, shape or form, whether through teenation or, you know, my, my, one, my, you know, wonderful time I got to spend with him in Phoenix, um, as, as an intern. Um, there's just, it just made me recognize the, the stamp that he has had on strength and conditioning um and it was just very appreciative to to kind of see that um secondly what came to my mind is that i you know i felt to be honest i felt uh really sad just knowing him on a i guess not a really deep personal level because for those who know charles there's only few that were really really you know really close and really tight to him but i kind of had this sense in the back of my head that i really hoped that he had found some form of peace um, and I don't even know about his passing or how it, how it happened, but, um, I mentioned it to a couple of coaches that I keep in contact with, uh, Stu being one of them, um, that I really just hope that, you know, he has had, he has had some form, some time over the past number of years from when I knew him that I could just tell there was a lot of, a lot of things that Charles wanted to do. And there was a lot of, uh, tension that I felt between, the kind of things that he wanted to do and make changes with and uh, just how he could eventually just communicate that. And um, I think sometimes that was some, some people took that the wrong way. um, But that was just his way of like trying to communicate and educate. But I I definitely saw beyond that. I saw a really good person. Um, And yeah, I just hope he had, I hope he's, I hope he had some peace. You know, um, cause I used to even, I used to joke about it to coaches, um, cause I knew it would piss them off that when, when they would go visit them, cause I'd say, yeah, go, go, go to, to his fucking bio signature. Um, and, uh, just tell him that, uh, he needs a hug, <laughs> which yeah. if you can imagine like one of the coaches going up and saying that to him, like, um, you know, I knew it would, it would, it would work his gears because it's, mm. he doesn't come across as being someone who, but I, but I, you know what I mean by that? Like, yeah. I just really hope that 
I really hope, which I, I don't even know that. And so it is very possible. I knew also he was a great father. Um, and so I really hope that uh, he really did have some, you know, got to work on some of those personal things for himself and, and uh, really find some peace. And um, that's, that's the, where my mind went, you know, second, secondarily to that. Um, and God, you know, third, it was, I think, quite possibly why it's also painful in terms of a memory is that I, I, I can't, it's like I'm doing second generation stories of how good Charles was at telling stories. So for those who know him, ever got time to spend with him, like he could have you rolling around in laughter for hours on just stories about strength and conditioning and, and personalities and performance. And the guy could like lay out you know, what someone was lifting six years ago and then a funny thing that happened in their training session and how he made fun of them and like just his stories will just go down in my brain as being something that's really a really powerful, uh, really powerful thing to remember. Um, and that's generally, you know, that's really, Robbie, what I feel really good about. I had so much, first of all, I was scared to death of the guy, you know, when I went down hmm. first time. Uh, and he made fun, he berated me for the first two or three days of the 10 days that I was there. And I thought I was just, I thought he was a complete asshole. And then he pulled me aside after a couple of days and uh, he was like, you know, I generally, it's just my style. I, you know, I make fun of people. And I, if I make fun of people, I generally like them, you know, yeah. um, called me Huel Brenner, you know, for a couple of days. I didn't even fucking know who that was. Apparently he's an actor that I somewhat looked like. Um, did, and, he, did, uh, did he like, did he make fun of your chicken arms and calves and stuff? Yeah, like, because I came with a, I fucking walked in with a, a sleeveless shirt, which was cool at the time. It <laughs> actually made me fucking remove it and put on this big sloppy uh, Poliquin internship. Um, like, I mean, the stories are just endless, but, yeah. um, you know, he, re- he, he was a gentleman and a really nice person um, that I don't think a lot of people, unless you were in close to him, really got to appreciate. Um, and, you know, he would take me out to lunch. Um, and uh, yeah, he just took care of me for those for those times that were there at the internship, and you know, uh, treated me like a really good person. So, um, but that that's the yeah first you know was the impact that he had on just remembering that like on all my words and how I speak about design, he has massive imprint on that. Secondly, was my you know sadness really on uh, on hoping that he found some peace, and mm. of course, understanding the breadth the depth of this is is profound. Um, and then third, you know, I, I smile, you know, that's, I'm really happy about that. You know, he just provided so many really great stories that I just can't forget that uh, I'll always be appreciative of that. Yeah. He's had a massive impact on the whole profession. And it was funny, you know, he, you kind of said your mind went a certain place when you heard the news. It was actually Stu McMillan who, who sent me a text message. As you know, I'm over here in IFAS with Bill Hartman and we're kind of every day so far has been very, very intense uh, in terms of our learning. And so I'm leaving my phone like out of the classroom and like I went out and I just saw the text from Stu and he just told me like, and I just sent, sent back and said, is, is this like serious? Like, not, and like I knew he wasn't joking, but it's it just, that was my immediate response. But I'm not just saying this because I'm speaking to you, but my actual first thought was you. I actually, that's why I sent you, and you know, I sent you an email saying, God, I, I hope you're okay. Cause I knew, I knew you had a very close relationship with Charles early on in your career and he had been a massive influence and you can see, and it's not only in your program design, but it's in many people's program design, but you can see Charles's influences on certain elements of your program design too. It, me too. I mean, I, I took Poliquin back in 2009, one and two, and actually he didn't teach the course, but he was there. He came in like for a day or two. And um, yeah, he had massive influence on me. I mean, Mike Boyle always talks about the time he went with Jeff Oliver from Holy Cross to a Poliquin course. And he's like, he went home that day and he went to Jeff Oliver on the way home. We have to rewrite all our, all our programs. Because it was when Charles was like talking about, why don't you superset? Like you save so much more time. And Boyle was like, I never thought about this. <laughs> so yeah, he's had a massive influence. But um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think, and that's a good point you raise, which again, I'm appreciative of at this current time for that, that uh, I really don't think, especially because of the age today, of the influence that he's had. And so I think it was really good that, you know, we got to at least discuss it because there's a lot of things that, for example, coaches that I've taught that probably don't even know of him that are probably practicing some great principles and not even aware that, Where you know, came from. basically yeah. was the inspiration from Charles's ideas, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, just a true master. 
absolutely listen that's um that was the reason why i just wanted to get you on today just to you know kind of pay pay our respects to charles i mean whether, whether people knew him personally or again have just been influenced from charles from afar i think all of us you know despite what a lot of people might have thought of charles from maybe interactions or or just what they perceived of him i mean none of us can question like what he contributed to the field you know he's he's influenced all of us in some in some way so um and i, I just knew you in, in particular now it, it meant a lot to you because again you had such a close relationship with him yeah yeah well thanks for hitting me up and uh even on your final comments there based upon it i think that the recognition for it um is is not only important but y- you know just recognizing what you said of people always thought differently about how you yeah. know he about his way and how he yeah. did things. um and um yeah i just just that note in itself you know should make us all inspired to um you know do what we want to do and uh feel really good and confident about how we communicate those things which mm. is what charles did mm. um and then of course just look at the impact that he's made and recognize that and i think that's a lesson that he may indirectly may be um somewhat uh happy with that he's had that we can all take as a lesson all right and in i know like in the grand th- schemes of things this puts everything into a perspective but uh we're both under time crunches so i, I kind of feel really bad saying that because it's kind of like we're talking about like life and how important it is but yeah no know. um i think you know we i just wanted to talk about it to um to as a as a recognition and an honor of uh yeah. charles uh, yeah. for his legacy and i i think that if it went unspoken it would be uh it just wouldn't be the same. So. Just one, one final thing I, I personally want to say, um, because it's, it is it is you that I'm talking to. And as you know, like you're one of my many mentors. And, and actually, and you know, I got a little, not that I got very emotional, but the talk kind of really hit deep when I, I went for a walk today on our break. And I was just, again, because I was thinking of you, you were actually on my mind a lot because again, I just knew Charles was, was a big mentor to you. And I was just thinking, God, if something was to happen to someone like you or or Stu or Mike Boyle, like how that would impact me. So I was kind of trying to, you know, put, almost put myself in your shoes. Not consciously, it was just the talk came in and I was like, God, if something happened to James or, or Stu, like how, how would I have taken that? You know, Because even, I didn't know Charles like you did, but I even like throughout the day was like, I can't believe Charles Paul has that passed away. Yeah. I know. And even speaking to my wife about it, like, you know, cause then we take it into a reality context, right. Of having loved ones around you at 57 years of age, like that's just not the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's why it's, it's tough to grieve about it. But, um, I thought about those same things and what, what I do from that, um, if anything is again, like my point is that, you know, we have to be inspired, you know, um, and really just, you know, don't take for granted the relationships that, that we've built and the people we've learned from. And as a learning from this, for me specifically, I don't know about anyone else, but um, I'm going to, you know, start more recently thanking um, a lot of people that I've learned from, mm-hmm. um, because I think that may have um, gone unnoticed for the past little while with Charles. So yeah. um, it's just a good learning for me. So with everything, I guess there's always some things we can learn from it. Well, just from me to you. I love you and I love everything you've done for me and I really appreciate you. So I just want you to know that because I mean, even just with this news of Charles, it's, it's made me want to do that. Now, you know, you know, I'll email Mike and email Sue and just, yeah, just make sure to say it every day. Cause you never know. You just never know. So yeah. thanks so much, James. Thank you.